Now, non-material culture also includes symbols. And those can be anything from the words I'm saying to the American flag. So the American flag symbolizes America itself, obviously. To some people, it may symbolize certain American values that we like to hold up, like freedom, democracy, etc. Uh, within it, in fact, are symbols like the 50 stars for the 50 states and the 13 stripes for the original 13 colonies. And then we have uh, symbols of various religious traditions that um, have a shared meaning within that religion or else possibly for other people outside of the religion. Um, letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the alphabet, is a bunch of symbols that we can put together to make a language. Um, and culture isn't consistent. Culture changes over time. So our language has changed over time, and we can use symbols in new ways. We can innovate. So just as someone innovated by inventing the telephone at some point, the text texting cell phone um, required s quicker ways of communication because people were communicating more through text than they ever had before. And so people started to shorten. They started to come up with new ways to use language um, and even new ways to use some of the our, our punctuation. So um, since you can't see someone's emotion during a text, um, you put in a happy face or an angry face to tell the difference between hey, ha how you doing? And hey, how you doing? Right? Very useful. Um, language is, is so useful that um, that's one of the main ways that we can try and distinguish one culture from another. Um, ethnic groups often share a language, and that allows them to share ideas and knowledge, and so we often find that where people share a language, they'll often share other cultural traits. And there's a lot of languages. 300 within the U.S. and within New Orleans about 1 in 10 homes don't speak um, English as their main language. Um, there are 7,000 languages in the world but perhaps due to that cultural diffusion and globalization many of those languages, about half, are only spoken by a few people and may not survive in the next few generations. Now that doesn't mean that the people who speak them don't survive, but if your children learn a more common dominant language and don't teach their children your language, then your, la your family will continue, but your culture may in some sense die off. So there are many languages in the world, English is far from the most common, um, although it's probably the most common secondly learned language because it's become somewhat of an international language of business. But uh, more common languages include um, Mandarin Chinese and um, various Hindustani dialects. Even using language to distinguish between different cultures gets a bit tricky sometimes. Cultures overlap. Um, some people speak the same language but with different dialects and often with very different cultural traits. So um, we sometimes use Hispanic and Latino interchangeably to refer to people who speak Spanish or people from the Central and South America and the Caribbean. Um, but does that include people from Spain in Europe? Does that include people from um, Brazil who speak Portuguese? Um, and is, can we talk about these large ethnic groups, um, but also smaller ethnic groups that make them up? There is Cuban food, which is very distinct from Mexican food, but both are often referred to as Hispanic or Latino. Even between the British and the Americans, our English can be quite different, um, and you might sometimes get yourself into an embarrassing situation if you don't realize that. If you're trying to take out uh, your trash can in Britain, people are going to call it a rubbish bin. If you tell someone um, you're going out in your pants, they're going to assume that you mean underwear because in Britain, what we call pants, as in our outer leggings, um, they call trousers. Now, non-material culture also differs in our values. Uh, values are what we consider good and important and desirable, so um, we might have a culture where individualism is considered the most important thing. People need to work for themselves, um, they need to be free to do what they want, 
versus collectivism, the idea that we need to work together to improve our society as a whole, that what matters is the group. In the United States, um, these sociologists, this isn't Robin Williams the actor, it's a sociologist named Robin Williams, have found that there's about 15 general values that most Americans seem to hold. Um, although they may take them in slightly different ways. But here's Obama talking about these folks talking about values. Now, politicians love to talk about values because they're important to people. So he says hard work, that's a value. Looking out for one another, that's a value. That humanitarianism, that we're all in this together, that I am my brother's and my sister's keeper, that's a value. But we also value progress. We value science and technology. We think these things are really important. We believe in hard work but not in working harder than you have to. And so you have infomercials where uh, someone's chopping vegetables, and they say, are you tired of spending your time chopping vegetables? With the chop 5,000, you can chop them in 10 seconds flat. And that leaves you more time, of course, to be comfortable and pursue love. Values also shape our society. They shape our politics. They shape our social programs. So we believe in democracy. We believe in equality. We tend to believe in religiosity as well, and not necessarily a specific religion, but the general kind of feeling that you have to believe in something. And so we have politicians also often talking about their religious backgrounds. And although we hold up equality as one of our crucial values, we also tend to believe in group superiority. We believe that whether uh, if I'm a Republican, those Democrats are, you know, are, are idiots and they're going to destroy this country. And if you're a Democrat, you tend to believe, ah, oh, Democrats, like, we need to get more Democrats in office because those Republicans are going to destroy us. And this actually originally, in the, in the original report, was racism and group superiority. Because although we have the ideal value of equality, we, we like to think that's what our culture is about, we can see that ideal culture doesn't always equal up to the reality of our culture, our real culture, which does have a history of um, oppression of certain groups and denial of rights to certain groups. So the U.S. is often thought of as a melting pot. And is that what it is? Is, is, it, a, is it an amalgamation? Are all cultures equally kind of mixed in together to make American culture? Or is there a dominant culture, maybe the original kind of white English, or at least Northwest European Protestant culture that requires others assimilate to our culture, that they take on our cultural values. These are a couple of the ways that different cultures can interact. Or have immigrants coming into this country retained the ethnicity of their ancestors? Have they kept up their culture? And if so, do we celebrate that difference? Do we celebrate all of the pluralistic cultures that exist together? Or are we a society of segregation? Have some ethnic groups remained separate because they're forced to, because they weren't accepted into the dominant culture? So society is a group of people sharing some cultural traits, living in the same basic geographic area, and relatively independent. So we can talk about um, the society of even a single city in some ways. And we can talk about the society of the United States, which shares a national government and economy, and we all use the same dollar and speak essentially the same language. But we can also talk about the society of the Earth itself, because we all share this globe, and we all interact with, with each other in the larger economic and political and cultural sphere. So is American an ethnicity, or is America a society made up of many ethnicities. And again, we have someone's stereotypical idea of what American culture is all about. But America is a diverse place. We see many different cultural traditions, many different ways of doing things, even many different languages being spoken. Now, one way that the culture of the United States has often been divided is the idea of North versus South. And looking at this map, if you ignore everything over here and just stick to the Eastern part of the country, you can see that in terms of our political values, in terms of who we vote for, um, that does seem to be some truth to that. And Colin Woodard, in his book American Nations, would say that's because different groups settled in those places. And it was 
the cultures of those different groups and their ideals when they were first setting up the current modern states after um, essentially killing off and driving out many of the native peoples of the land, that, that each of those groups set up the dominant culture, that even as others moved in, that dominant culture remained um, the key set of values and traditions um, that organized our politics and our political programs. And when you look at a more nuanced view of the 2012 political election, you can see that it's not just North and South, but also that there's a lot of states that are kind of in between, that aren't immediately decided. Now first you can see the left coast um, tends to go a little more liberal. The far northeast, what he calls Yankeedom, tends to go pretty consistently um, liberal, democratic. The south tends to go pretty consistently Republican, conservative, except for Florida. Now what do we see when we look at Florida? He actually includes the very bottom part of Florida, Miami, as being part of the Spanish Caribbean. And you can see over here in what he calls El Norte, the Spanish influence, um, reaches up into these places, and we tend to see that those are also where we have some of that bigger divide. And again, where we have the Midlands, where we have the the crossover between Yankeedom and Greater Appalachia and the Midlands, that's where we have a lot of these in-between states. Now when you take it down to the level of not just whole states but individual counties and look at the way the votes were cast there, you can see that it's much more nuanced even than that. And so what we're going to talk about next time is the cultural divisions even within one cultural group. The way that, for instance, cities tend to have more liberal values than the countryside.